Hi, this week's weekly roundup, there's a serious amount of new SBCs, as well as the usual AI boards, and thankfully, we're past all those stupid robots that we saw last year. Hi, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who provide me with all my PCBs. To see how good they actually were, I snuck a spy cam into their main factory, and I was pretty impressed. They have equipment in there that would make James Bond jealous. So if you're looking to produce some professional, high quality PCBs with a fast turnaround time, then check them out. Not only can you order 10 PCBs for only $2, but they also offer a shipping discount up to $20 on your first order. That's pretty impressive considering what you get. Wait, wait, you snuck a spy cam into their factory? Well, I didn't actually sneak a spy cam in. I asked for some photos and they just gave them to me. Oh, right. First up on Kickstarter, the Pro Mark III is a general purpose test equipment aimed at RFID. It allows you to listen and replay any NFC and RFID traffic between 125kHz and 13.56MHz. Interface is via Bluetooth or USB and runs the Atmel SAM 7S SOC. No indication of whether you can update with your own firmware or not, but if you're into RFID hacking then this looks pretty good. We've seen a lot of STEM education kits in past weekly roundups. The Leguino is yet another one that is based on Lego bricks, but they've minimised their hardware investment by enclosing a common platform such as the Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano and the Raspberry Pi into Lego enclosures. So you can code up using all the familiar tools that you're used to, but they heavily support Visuino. They also have created a bunch of add-ons such as displays, servos and gears, switches, buttons, LEDs, microphones, sensors, and battery and breadboard units. Bion is a Bluetooth multimeter. It won't be able to take on Dave Jones's multimeter for quality, but comes in cheaper. You can measure the traditional way, or install an iPhone or Android app to query the meter. It has some expected features such as auto measuring, but also some cool ones such as voice assisted measurement. The specs aren't fantastic, but for the price, it's okay. Okay, so it's just another Raspberry Pi Zero with a handy USB hat. But this one allows you to set up multiple virtual flash drives. Interesting. My prediction of 2018 as being the year of the FPGA for makers is heating up. Here's another FPGA breakout board based on the Lattice LCM X02 series. But this one is interesting as their goal isn't just to make a breakout board, but provide a full education system as well. It's a hard sell trying to teach FPGAs to beginners, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. The Raspberry Boom is a Pi hat that aims to detect infrasonic waves. These are sound waves that are below human hearing, which is 20 hertz and below. And since frequencies that low travel long distances, you can pick up interesting things such as volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tornadoes, explosions, meteorites and aliens, apparently. The early bird price of $279 US is steep, but that gives you the Pi, SD card, hat, enclosure, power supply, and mobile app. Back in weekly roundup number 50, we saw the little buddy talker. Well, now he has a bigger brother or sister. This version increases the number of words from 254 to 1016. And back in weekly roundup number 51 on Tindy, we saw the maker Uno. You know. They now have a Kickstarter campaign up for grabs, which you can get for 17% cheaper. If you like binary and clocks, then this simple Kickstarter is a binary clock. It's one of the better built ones I've seen, but it does lack things like syncing to an external time source. Over at Indiegogo, there's an open hardware pick and place machine. If you've ever made more than a handful of your own PCBs, then you'll understand the frustration working with tiny components. A PNP will automatically pick up and place components onto a PCB for you. Normally they are pretty expensive, around $4,000, but with this campaign you can get one for under a grand that supports vision control of components down to 201s, with a 400 by 250 millimeter work area. Pretty good. Over at Crowd Supply, there's a data center in a box in pre-launch. The circumference provides power, cooling and gigabit network switch for up to 32 nodes, based on either the Raspberry Pi or Udo XA6. The main control unit is a standard PC that provides control over cooling, power and access to node consoles. And yet another portable gaming thingy, this one based on the Pi Zero. 
comes with a five-way joystick, two buttons, 1.4 inch screen and 300 milliamp hour battery. Back in weekly roundup number 30 we saw the Orange Pi 2G IoT. Well the Orange Pi guys are back at it again with the Orange Pi 4G IoT. This board is completely different to the 2G IoT. They've dropped the Ethernet port and gone wireless mad, supporting not only 4G but Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, FM and GPS. It runs a MediaTek MT6737 SOC with 1 gig RAM, 8 gig eMMC, HDMI and LCD out and Pi header powered from a 5 volt 2 amp DC jack. At 45 US dollars it's the cheapest way to get access to a 4G network. If you've ever designed your own PCBs then sometimes you want to be able to compare changes you've made between revisions, especially if you're working in a team. CAD Lab IO solves the issue by providing visual comparisons between boards and schematics along with annotations and comments. That's pretty good. Since the last weekly roundup there's been a bunch of festivals and conferences. The big one was of course Embedded World 2018, but there was also the RepRap Festival which highlights just how far 3D printing has come. Then there was the Trenton Computer Festival, and you may have missed World Create Day. And of course Hackaday announced their Hackaday Academy Awards, with $200,000 in cash prizes up for grabs. It will be interesting to see what hacks come up. Over at Microchip they have shown us that the old AVR series chipset isn't dead yet by releasing a new variant called the Atmega4809. From the datasheet it seems to read like a typical AVR. 8-bit RISC CPU, 16-channel ADC, SPI ITC, but, but, wait, what's this? Configurable custom logic, nice. Admittedly it only has four lookup tables, so not as advanced as an FPGA, but still it's a nice feature and hopefully a sign of things to come. Over at Resin.io they are dipping their toes into the SBC market with Project Fin. This is a ruggedized carry board for the Pi CM3 Lite with up to 64GB eMMC, dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RTC, mini PCIe and an Artix 020 MCU which can shut down the Pi completely for low power modes. It can also handle a wide DC input supply of 6 to 30 volts. The 96 boards format is finally getting some traction and we're seeing a number of boards hitting the market using this format. Four new SBCs have just recently been released. For example, Avnet have launched a 96 boards format SBC based on the Zinc Ultra Scale Plus SOC with an onboard FPGA, 2 gig DDR4 RAM, micro SD, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, three USB 3.0 ports, mini DP along with a standard 96 boards GPIO expansion powered from a wide 8 to 18 volt 3 amp DC supply. Then there's the HiKey 970 which is another powerhouse running the octa-core Kirin 970 with 6GB 4 channel DDR4 RAM, 64GB UFS flash, micro SD, gigabit Ethernet, dual band Wi-Fi, GPS, GLONASS, 2 USB 3.0, 2 USB Type-C and mini PCIe running from a wide 8 to 18 volt DC supply. What the heck is this an SBC or a desktop? Over at Arrow they have finally come out with the Dragonboard 820C in the 96 boards format. This runs the new Snapdragon 820E SOC which is a quad-core Cairo processor running at up to 2.3 gigahertz. A bit of a beast. The board also has 1 gig DDR4 RAM, 32 gig UFS flash, micro SD slot, gigabit ethernet, dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB 3.0, mini PCIe, HDMI capable of 4K at 60 hertz and unusually GPS and motion sensors. You get all this for 200 bucks. Not to be outdone, Genia Tech have also released the Developer Board 8, which as far as I can see is identical to Arrow's board, minus a couple of bits. So not sure what's going on there. Of course last week we saw the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus being released. No need to go into that here, check out what I thought of it in my quick review. Gumsticks have announced two boards that work with Amazon Voice Services, called the Chatterbox. The first board takes a Calibri IMX7 system on module and provides Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Gigabit, Ethernet, RTC, SD slot and audio in and out. The second board is designed to take the Raspberry Pi CM3 module with pretty much the same specs except there's no Ethernet. Solid Run have released a couple of their SBCs which both take their IMX8 system on module which comes in three flavors from dual core Cortex A53 with 3GB DDR4 RAM 
to quad-core Cortex A53 with 4 gig DDR4 RAM. All three boards also have gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, PCIe, SSD, EMMC, SD, USB 3.0, HDMI capable of 4K at 60Hz, and a bucket load of GPIOs. This board can be chucked into the Hummingboard Pulse, which breaks out pretty much everything on the SOM, but also provides a microbus click interface, and can be powered from 7 to 36 volts, or PoE. Then there's a Qbox Pulse Mini PC, which breaks out less of the SOM features and is designed more as a desktop. And over at Tindy, there's a bunch of really cool things. For example, this store was pretty quick to release a PoE hat for the Pi 3B Plus. For 17 US dollars, you can power your Pi without those annoying micro USB cables. Bear in mind that this is the cheap part. You'll still need a gigabit switch that supports PoE, which can be expensive. If you want to muck around with Zigbee on a Pi, then this small hat runs the SI Labs EM357, which is pre-programmed with firmware supporting all the standard NCP commands over Serial UART. There's also plugins for OpenHab, NoRed, and other platforms. If you muck around with ham radios, then this next one might interest you. It's an Arduino shield running the Actus AT1846S chip, giving you TX and RX over all the common ham frequencies. It also has adjustable channel bandwidth, squelch, vox, DTMF encoding, RSSI, and is powered from a 5 to 20 volt DC supply. Want to have some decent control over your reflow oven? This Tendi store has an Arduino compatible controller with an onboard Bluetooth module, thermocouple interface, LiPo battery management, and solid state relay. All code is open source and available on GitHub. The Max Pro Logic was a successful Kickstarter back in weekly roundup number 45. Well, now it's available on Tindy for around $5 US more than the Kickstarter price. Running the Altera Max 10 FPGA, it has a lot of bang for your buck. And here's another alternative in the same Arduino form factor, but running the more expensive Lattice Ice 40 FPGA. Supports both 5 and 3.3 volt logic levels from a 6 to 17 volt DC supply, and pushes out an additional 20 GPIOs. If you use a lot of ESP32 modules, then programming them can be fiddly. The Flex Red Devil uses horizontally placed pogo pins, allowing you to program modules quickly. The LoRa Sensor Tile is a LoRa-based sensor board that includes LiPo charging, SPI flash and accelerometer, pressure and light sensors in one small 23x23mm package. Can be powered from LiPo or two AA batteries, with a slip current of only 10 microamps. Another breakout from Pesky Products, this long-range proximity sensor uses the VL53L1X, which improves on the previous VL53L0X by increasing the sensor range from 2 to 4 meters, while still maintaining the 1 mm accuracy. If you saw my MQTT-based RGB LED panel, I used a very common Hub75 panel. I used one of Adafruit's LED matrix hats, but this is a good alternative. The pocket scroller allows control of up to 72 P10 type panels. Yes, that's right, 72 16 by 32 LED RGB panels. That'll give you around a 288 by 128 pixel display. But bear in mind, panels can be expensive. Over at IT, they are selling an updated version of the Sonoff POW called the R2. This upgrade provides user configurable overload protection, live current and voltage readings, and 99% measurement accuracy. And at Seed Studio, they have on pre-order the ReSpeaker Core version 2.0. This upgrade looks more like an SBC as it now contains the RK3229 SOC with 1 gig RAM, 4 gig eMMC, SD slot, HDMI out, Wi-Fi, and 100 megabit ethernet. Apart from that, everything else is identical to its predecessor with a six mic array, LEDs, and growth ports. Way back in weekly roundup number 38, we saw the Artix 530 starter kit. Well now, Seed Studio, in conjunction with Samsung, have available for pre-order the Eagle Eye 530. This is a Pi form factor SBC, what else? Running the Artix 530 SOC with 1 gig RAM, 4 gig eMMC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Gigabit Ethernet, and Zigbee, with everything else almost identical to the Pi, except power is provided by DC Jack, which is a good move. Or, if you're really desperate, you can still use a micro-USB port. 
They also have their Cytron Smart Drive Duo, which is a DC motor driver that can handle up to 80 amp peak and 30 amp continuous on two channels. Has onboard MOSFETs that are switched at 18 kHz to reduce noise, and handles all the thermal and current overload protection for you. So all you have to do is control it via RC, PWM or UART. Over at Adafruit they have their AS7262 based 6 channel visible light sensor which allows sensing red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet colour intensities. Access is over UART using plain old AT commands. Sparkfront have this pretty cool magnetic imaging tile that was designed by Peter Jansen. It contains an array of 64 Hall effect sensors that convert magnetic fields to a visible spectrum. Sparkfront are also getting into helium in a big way. No, not that type of helium, but this type of helium, which consists of a module called an Atom running a SAM R2 and Skyworks FEM. It's similar to LoRa in that it's a long range, low power device. You can get helium starter kits which interface to a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, providing a gateway between the internet and helium network. Or you can also get a standalone ethernet to helium gateway. They also have in an updated fingerprint scanner. This module can scan and store up to 200 fingerprints in any rotation and requires only 1.5 seconds for recognition. Access via standard UART. Over at Palolo they have in a stepper motor controller capable of driving a 4.5 to 35 volt stepper with quadrature encoder input and control over USB, UART, I2C, RC and analog voltage. As always, links are on my website and don't forget you can use my snazzy YouTube indexing thing which will display annotation links as you watch the video. If you like watching my channel then consider becoming a patron. Running a YouTube channel takes a lot of work and your support along with sponsorships allow me to continue to produce quality videos that you want to see. So that's about it. Thanks for watching and see you next week.